I'll start pathetically. The Soviet Armored Vehicle for Reconnaissance BRDM-2 is one of the most outstanding projects in the field of wheeled armored vehicles. As conceived by the military customer, the intelligence of the Soviet Army was to receive an armored vehicle, unique in its characteristics and capabilities. Compact, highly passable, floating like a boat with mobility no less than that of a conventional car, fully armored and completely sealed in case of a nuclear war. And, at the same time, roomy, with firepower like an armored personnel carrier and, which is also important, not very expensive to manufacture. The military themselves did not really expect that their maximalism would lead to any significant results. But the seemingly impossible task was successfully solved. In May 1962, the BRDM-2 was adopted by the Soviet Army. Its production began in 1963 and continued until 1989, that is, more than 30 years, which indicates that the design was very successful. Yes, successful, but controversial. For example, the requirement to ensure buoyancy did not allow the use of thick armor. The side of the BRDM-2 was protected only from automatic bullets. Armor-piercing bullets could hit the crew, and a heavy machine gun pierced through the armor. The 140 horsepower engine was placed at the rear, providing the driver with a good overview. To overcome ravines, ditches and trenches, a pair of lowered small rollers were installed between the main wheels. Upon closer inspection, they turned out to be wheels from an aircraft. Moreover, these mini wheels even got a chain drive. Borrowed from the BDR-60 armored personnel carrier, the machine gun turret with two machine guns reliably protects the machine gunner from enemy bullets, especially in urban combat. But its installation significantly reduced the internal space that was required to accommodate the machine gunner's seat rotating with the turret from the aiming mechanisms. The result is that only one paratrooper can be accommodated in the fighting compartment. It turns out that the BRDM-2 is not an armored personnel carrier for scouts, but a modern incarnation of a machine gun armored vehicle. Although the BRDM-2 is fully armored and weighs 7 tons, it has good snow and mud capability. In difficult situations, self-locking differentials installed in the drive axles help. For example, the BRDM-2 quietly rides through deep snow, falling into it along the bottom. Even if one wheel begins to slip, the differential lock mechanisms redistribute torque to other wheels and the armored vehicle continues to move. If necessary, tire pressure can be reduced by increasing the contact patch. BRDM-2 can swim, and very well. To move through the water in the rear of the hull there is a sliding flap, behind which the water jet is hidden. And in the front part, an automatically rising breakwater is made, which prevents the incoming wave from flooding the driver's glass and the upper hatch. The reconnaissance group can be placed on the BRDM-2 only on the outside on the hull. Usually fighters do this when they get into a real combat situation. Because little is visible through the loopholes in the hull, it is very difficult to observe the situation through viewing devices while driving. But most importantly, in the event of an explosion under the wheel or bottom, the paratroopers stationed outside will simply be thrown to the ground, and those who were inside will face a sure end. The design of the BRDM-2 used many components from serial trucks, including the engine and transmission, so its production was relatively inexpensive, which allowed this armored vehicle to be produced in large quantities and exported in large quantities. At the end of the last decade, the BRDM-2 was used in the armies of more than 50 countries. Most of all, about 600 armored vehicles each, Angola and India had.